Elaborating on the recent DCAU themes, specifically those featured in a previous Batman Beyond video, this upload explores said series' episode Meltdown in fuller detail. This season 1 instalment marks the final DCAU appearance of Mr Freeze, who thanks to the endeavours and finances of corrupt CEO Derek Powers is provided with a new body, free of his previous Sub-Zero condition, an apparent blessing for the former supervillain given that he spent decades as a disembodied, cryogenically preserved, sentient head. I've been in the exact same situation at least three times. That's a joke. I've actually been in that situation four times. A guilt-ridden Freeze attempts to atone for past crimes while nefarious motives of other characters gradually emerge. The series' vivid, atmospheric, authentic cyberpunk setting, conveyed via distinctive, refined, vibrantly coloured visuals and thoughtfully incorporated technology, is fully represented. These elements are fused with clear, varied characterization. For example, the smug, immoral, wealthy Derek Powers displays a degree of suffering and desperation rarely seen with incomparable characters. The professional, composed, Dr Stephanie Lake, shows a level of agency and deceptiveness rarely shown with incomparable characters, while the previously cool, occasionally cruel Mr Freeze shows a level of remorse, sensitivity and selflessness rarely seen with incomparable characters. These traits, when combined with strategically ambiguous writing, allow for several symbolic shades of villainy to be displayed with clear context. Meanwhile, current Batman Terry McGuinness's idealistic, compassionate view of Mr Freeze's redemption and former Batman Bruce Wayne's more sceptical view of Mr Freeze, his former foe's redemption, present several symbolic shades of heroism, resulting in a daring tale rife with deeply thought-provoking, balanced, understandable, relevant arguments on morality amidst a sea of sober and tragic drama and intensely spectacular action. Meltdown essentially capitalises on the bold, meticulous qualities of its predecessor, Batman the Animated Series, which for those uninitiated I should explain is an animated series about Batman. It's a good thing I explained that, isn't it? While incorporating unique risks that were unusable in the previous show. The quality is enhanced by the proficient voice cast including the late great Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne, the late great Michael Ansara as Mr Freeze, Linda Hamilton as Dr Stephanie Lake, Sherman Howard as Derek Powers, and Will Friedell as the new Batman Terry McGuinness. While listing these characters, I've discovered a form of name-based symbolism. Dr Stephanie Lake is presumably called Lake because she essentially defrosts Mr Freeze, melted ice becomes water, which is found in a lake, and sinks, and showers, and baths, and toilets. I don't have time to list every possible place that you can find water. That's next week's video. Derek Powers is presumably called Powers because of the amount of power he possesses, and Terry McGuinness is presumably called McGuinness because that is his surname. I might be reading into that last example a bit too much. The episode's assets are epitomised by its final scenes. It's discovered that Mr Freeze's new body is deteriorating. This is disappointing news for Derek Powers, since Mr Freeze was a test subject to ascertain whether Derek Powers could be given a new body, to escape the effects of the radioactive mutation that's plaguing him. To solve the problem, Freeze must be killed and an autopsy must be performed, a plan proposed by none other than Dr Stephanie Lake, Mr Freeze's potential love interest. This betrayal prompts Freeze to return to villainy, donning a new super suit. He targets his antagonists. Freeze's attempts to dispose of Powers, Lake and himself fail, partly due to Derek Powers mutation granting him some new powers, see I told you his name was symbolic, and the arrival of Batman, who Freeze actually does rescue from Powers, now being referred to as Blight. Batman prevents the destruction of the building and the death of countless people, though Freeze prevents Batman from saving him, admitting in his final moments that the new Batman is the only individual to have displayed some concern for him. A following sequence shows Bruce Wayne, the old Batman, and Terry McGuinness, the new Batman, conceding that both of their views on the late Victor Freeze, specifically Bruce believing him to be villainous and irredeemable, and Terry believing him to be compassionate and redeemable, were valid in a succinct, subtle, tasteful, meaningful, tender passage. 
After such high praise, negatives will be addressed in the name of fairness, though the only lesser point is that the episode perhaps faintly relies on viewers' prior understanding of Mr. Freeze's character, which may alienate newcomers, since he was first introduced in a different series. This is a forgivable flaw, to the point of almost being a non-issue, because firstly, most viewers of Batman Beyond will be familiar with Mr. Freeze and his previous DCAU appearances, and secondly because, even for viewers who are unfamiliar with Mr. Freeze, the episode does provide a clear enough sense of his character, so the events will be understandable, if less impactful. In conclusion, Meltdown is a tragic, complex, appropriately dark, creatively exciting Batman Beyond episode and a worthy swan song for Victor Freeze. Thanks for watching, and if I don't see you next time, I'll assume you're seeking revenge on the corrupt CEO who provided you with a new body after you'd spent years as a disembodied head only to betray you soon after. If that's the case, same. It feels so frantic, automatic, a collapsing paradigm. Everybody's dancing on the ashes, all hail the end of time. Few seconds left. Who will buy my sweet red roses for blooms for a penny?